Hi there, my name's Andrew, I'm a medical student here. Could I confirm your name, please? My name's Alan Johnson. Alan, nice to meet you. And how old are you? I'm 37. Okay. Today, Alan, I've been asked to perform a respiratory exam. Would that be okay? Mm hmm that's fine. Are you comfortable at the moment? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, I'm just going to start by making some observations from the end of the bed. Okay. From the end of the bed, Alan appears comfortable at rest. He's not obviously breathless or cyanosed, and the chest is moving symmetrically with respiration. There's no obvious scars or deformities of the chest. There's no obvious wheeze or stride or, and he's not obviously using his accessory muscles to breathe. Looking around the bed, there's no signs of inhalers, medication or adjuncts the patient might be taking. There's no nebulizer or oxygen supply. Mr. Johnson, I'm just going to have a look at your hands. Will that be okay? Yeah, that's fine. Could you just hold your hands up like this for me? On closer inspection of the hands, there's no obvious tar staining. Mr. Johnson, can you just do that for me with your nails? There's no evidence of any clubbing. The temperature of the hands feels warm. Turning the hands over, there's no evidence of any muscle wasting and no palmar erythema. Mr. Johnson, can I ask you to put your hands out like this in front of you? and keep them there. Ideally, I'd have the patient hold their hands out for 30 seconds. There is no evidence of any fine tremor indicative of bronchodilator use. And now can I ask you to cock your wrist back for me and hold it there. Again, ideally, I'd have the patient hold their hands there for 30 seconds, but there's no obvious coarse tremor indicative of CO2 retention. You can relax your arms. Mr. Johnson, I'm now going to assess your pulse. I'm just going to feel it at the wrist. And I'm timing it for 15 seconds. Mr. Johnson has a pulse rate of 60 beats per minute and a respiratory rate of 12 breaths per minute. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I'm now going to look at your neck. If I'm going to ask you to turn your left, uh, head to the left-hand side, and I'm observing for the JVP. The JVP is not visible. There is no palate of the conjunctiva that might indicate anemia. There is no flushing of the cheeks. Mr. Johnson, could I just ask you to open your mouth for me? and stick out your tongue and raise it to the roof of your mouth. There's no obvious central cyanosis and there is good dental hygiene. Thank you. Also looking at the face, there is no obvious signs of Horner syndrome. I'm now going to inspect the chest more closely, Mr. Johnson. Could I ask you just to take a deep breath in and out for me? Thank you. There's no obvious asymmetry of the movement of the chest. There is no obvious scars indicating previous surgery. There's no obvious deformities. Mr. Johnson, can I just ask you to lift your arms up like this for me? That's fantastic. And I'm just looking for any lateral thoracotomy scars or pneumonectomy scars. Thank you, you can relax. I'm not going to fill your windpipe, Mr. Johnson. It might feel a little bit uncomfortable. The trachea is central. And the cricosternal distance is three finger widths, which is normal. And now I'm going to feel for the apex of your heart. Which is in the fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line. So now I'm going to put my hands around your chest, if you can just breathe normally for me. And now take a deep breath in. On a deep breath out. And take a deep breath in. And out. There's symmetrical movement of the chest. I'm now going to tap on your chest. Can you just lift this arm up for me? And this arm. Now I'm going to listen to your chest.
you spread normally for me. Just lift this arm. Now every time I place my stethoscope on your chest, can you say 99 for me? Yeah. Brilliant. On the anterior aspect of the chest, percussion was symmetrical and resonant, and auscultation was symmetrical, and there were no added sounds. Mr. Johnson, can I ask you to sit forward so I can inspect your back? I'm going to start by feeling for the glands in your neck. So I'm feeling the infraclavicular nodes, the supraclavicular nodes, working my way up the neck, feeling the cervical nodes, submandibular nodes, pre and post auricular nodes. No lymph lymphadenopathy could be seen. Inspecting the back, again there was no obvious deformity, asymmetry or scars that might indicate previous surgery. Mr Johnson, I'm just going to put my hands around your chest again. Okay. Could you take a deep breath in for me? And out. And deep breath in. And out. Thank you. And I'm going to tap on your chest. And now I'm going to have another listen. Just breathe normally for me. Now every time I place my stethoscope, can you say 99 for me? Yeah. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, Thank you. Percussion of the posterior aspect of the chest was symmetrical and resonant. Auscultation was symmetrical and there was no added sounds. Vocal resonance was normal. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. On examination of Mr. Johnson, there were no peripheral signs of respiratory disease. And on auscultation of the anterior and posterior aspects of the chest, sounds were symmetrical and there were no added sounds. There was also no lymphadenopathy. To complete my examination, I'd like to look at the sputum pot, do a peak flow at the bedside, and look at the OBS chart, paying particular attention to the blood pressure, temperature and oxygen sats. Thank you.